Welcome back to Movies Outpost. Today, we'll be diving into a crime action movie titled The Gentleman. Enjoy the recap. The movie kicks off with a scene of our main character, Michael, or Mickey for short. He is sitting in a bar with a prelude, if you wish to be the king of the jungle it is not enough to act like the king you must be the king there can be no doubt because doubt causes chaos and one's own demise. The quote is followed by a phone call to his wife telling her it is date night. As he hears some commotion through the phone, an unknown man pulls out a Glock from behind his blazer and blood splatters everywhere. Has our main man been shot already? Let's find out. We are now introduced to Raymond, Mickey Pearson's right-hand man, and Fletcher, who has made his way into Raymond's house. Fletcher, the annoying pain in the butt, supposedly wants to enjoy a drink with Raymundo. Fletcher discloses to Raymond that he has been offered a deal by Big Dave, editor extraordinaire who is out to destroy Raymond's boss, Mickey Pearson a man with very deep pockets who Fletcher wants to extort for 20 million pounds. Fletcher, the deluded sh as Raymond likes to call him, pours himself a drink and asks Ray to play a game, one which will give Ray the answer to why Fletcher has requested money in the sum of 20 million pounds. As the game unfolds, Fletcher introduces us to our characters, their backgrounds, and their relationships with each other, which ultimately results in some of their demise. Our first character is Mickey Pearson, our main protagonist who grew up as a clever poor boy who never finished his education because he found his naughty vocation of dealing dirty wonderweed to his rich upper-class uni pals after working his way up the game by not calling himself the king of the jungle, but rather acting like it, he decides to want to cash in his chips and get out of the game, finding the supposed perfect customer. A Jewish billionaire cowboy, Matthew Berger who is chosen by Mickey to buy his business selling green grass, However, Mickey's wife has her inhibitions about Matthew, but even still Mickey decides to teach him the game in the hopes he will buy it at the price he asks for. As the game continues to unfold, Fletcher reveals extremely confidential information regarding Mickey's operations of selling the White Widow Super Cheese. As Fletcher reveals this information to Raymond, we cut to Michael doing the same with Matthew, where Matthew questions his price of almost half a billion dollars. However, as Matthew continues to make sarcastic comments, Mickey opens a trap door causing Matthew's jaw to drop. A farm of weed as far as his eye can see. We cut back to the house once again to Fletcher introducing a new character into our game, Dry Eye, an Asian gangster who is the apparent antagonist in our story, and we'll soon find out why, but before that we are introduced to Mickey Pearson's only weak link in his otherwise impregnable armor. A woman who runs a high-end mechanic shop, his wife Rosalind Pearson. We cut back once again to Fletcher and Raymond, where Fletcher goes crazy over the heater barbecue at the house. He asks if there is any chance of having some steak, and as Raymond retrieves it from the freezer, we see the head of a man by the name of Aslan. Who is he and why is he dead in the freezer? We'll have to wait to find out. Our film cuts back again to our antagonist Dry Eye. He requests a meeting with Mickey Pearson from his wife, being told to f*** off. However, he gets his meeting, meeting up with Mickey at a bar and thanking him for the opportunity. Dry Eye tells him that he hears he is getting out of the game and wants to propose an offer. As he writes it down and proceeds to show Mickey, Mickey reinforces that he isn't for sale, and even if he was, Dry Eye's price is several zeros short. The outcome of the meeting ends off in a shootout with Mickey shooting Dry Eye and swearing his head off at him. But it seems Fletcher was just having some fun and exaggerated everything. Mickey simply tells Dry Eye to f*** off just as his wife did the first time around. Now let's get into some real action. Fletcher discloses to Raymond the details about an apparent rat infestation at one of Mickey's farms. We are then presented with a scene of five men entering the supposed hidden location of the farm. They are then confronted by five workers who walk out of the office and square up with the intruders. And bam, cut scene. The scene cuts as we are introduced to an older gentleman known as the coach, being confronted by a group of roadmen threatening to stab him. Unfazed, he slaps a knife out of one of their hands and mocks them for their intimidation tactics. As he is approached again, he sprays vinegar in one of their eyes and slaps another, giving them a lecture about their ability to fight and inviting them down to his gym. The coach receives a call by Ernie, one of the men who were seen to be entering Mickey's farm earlier. He tells the coach that he and the boys have landed some sticky bush. Following this phone call, Mickey watches a video on YouTube as the fight scene unfolds at his farm through the form of a music video. The intruders who raided the farm call themselves the toddlers, each of them having a montage of them wreaking havoc on the workers of the weed farm. As the coach arrives to the gym and sees the music video, he commands the boys to take it down from the internet as there could be a detrimental impact, considering that the drug game comes with a multitude of enemies. 
Meanwhile Mickey, his wife Rosa, and Raymond question how the location was disclosed, when it is insinuated to us by Fletcher that it was apparently Matthew, the potential buyer of the farms. Why would Matthew want to ruin a business he plans to buy? Aside from that, Mickey now must close down the farm that was breached, telling the Lord whose land the operation was being run from that he can no longer pay him commission. However, Mickey is still responsible for paying other lords and ladies commissions for use of their land. And for a particular couple, they request his assistance in retrieving their daughter. Mickey talks to Raymond and as his best man asks him to go looking for her, and even though he has his inhibitions, he cooperates. Now it's time for Raymond to take center stage as he reaches the council estate where the missing girl is. As Raymond and his goons break down the door of the apartment building, we see the daughter of our local duke and duchess, Laura Pressfield. Raymond reveals to the group he knows who they are and where they come from, apart from one little anomaly. A man who introduces himself as Aslan, the same man from inside the freezer, as Raymond lectures the group about their recreational drug usage and trying to radiate some positive vibes, he asks Laura if she is ready to turn the corner and return home, where she agrees and prepares herself to go home. She gets up to leave and says this place is a big fat dump, and one of the boys tries to stop her but is manhandled. Raymond leaves one of his men to watch the boys for a couple of minutes, as he escorts Laura outside. However, his man is attacked, and in a crazy accident, Aslan falls out of the window and over the balcony. Raymond then tells Mickey that Laura returned home safe with her parents and there was a small complication as some Russian kid fell off the balcony onto the ground, but the situation was handled. Fletcher then laughs at Raymond and says he didn't tell Mickey what actually happened. He hands photos of the lifeless body and says that he saw the whole thing take place as he was there. Turns out the roadman harassing the driver from earlier decided to record and take photos of the body as well as Raymond before running off. Raymond and his goons are in hot pursuit of the little sh**, but as one of them turn the corner, Ray is met with a whole group of these roadmen. To defuse the situation, he offers the boy money for the phone, but he is threatened with a machete, so he pulls out an SMG, firing multiple shots in the air and then drawing it on the boy with the phone. The now quiet weasel drops it and scurries off, leaving Raymond with the phone and with his money. Raymond's goons continue to chase the others, and fortunately retrieve their phones and delete the footage and images they have of Aslan lying face down and dead on the floor. Fletcher tells Raymond who's staring at the photo he needs to use the bathroom, but once he's inside he sees two of Ray's men carrying a corpse. Ray asks if there's a problem, and Fletcher says not at all. We cut once again to the coach and the toddlers at the gym. He interrogates Ernie about the man who gave him the location to the bud they stole, naming him as Fook. Ernie then discloses to the coach that he found out who they stole the butt off, giving him Mickey Pearson's name. The coach isn't too happy about that, as he had previously become informed about who Mickey Pearson is. As he is the father figure to the toddlers, he pays a visit to Raymond and extends his apologies on their behalf, also offering his loyalty, word, and time in exchange for leaving his boys alone. The coach tells Raymond he knows who the boys received the information of where the farm was off, and to our surprise has the man called Fook or Fuhook, who is in the trunk of his car. He says he can't breathe and needs his inhaler. They give it to him, but he runs and jumps a brick wall landing on some train tracks and yeah you get the idea. Mickey is not too happy about the bodies dropping around Raymond, but he believes Lord George, who is Dry Eye's boss, is behind the downfall of his White Widow cheese business, so he decides to pay him a visit. As they talk about the choice of drugs they deal, Lord George begins to experience a bout of projectile vomiting. Mickey tells him that he shouldn't have sent Dry Eye to mess around with his business to drive down the value of it. He makes it clear to Lord George that if he attempts to undermine his position once again, he will have no choice but to accept his call to arms. As he does this, one of Mickey's men lights one of Lord George's drug facilities on fire, reaffirming Mickey's position of authority. While this is taking place, Laura walks outside of her house and lays face first into the ground. Her parents come out only to see that she is lifeless and cannot believe what they are seeing. We then see Lord George questioning Dry Eye as to whether or not he raided Mickey's farm. Dry Eye denies the allegations but admits to going behind Lord George's back and offered money to buy Mickey's business. As our scene cuts once again, Fletcher's game with Raymond continues and he shows him photos of Dry Eye with our Jewish millionaire. The potential buyer of Mickey's farm was at a soccer game, seated next to Dry Eye. Fletcher even discloses their conversation, where Dry Eye admits to murdering Lord George. Matthew then tells him not to jeopardize his deal with Mickey, however Dry Eye responds by telling Matthew to back off so that he can have the business for himself. And as it turns out, Dry Eye grabs a promotion from the death of George. 
We retrace back to our initial scene, where Mickey was supposedly shot in the head before the movie begins. The commotion he heard through the phone at the beginning of the movie is Dry Eye paying Mickey's wife Rosalind a nasty type of visit. And it wasn't our main man Mickey that was shot, but rather the man who pulled out his Glock was shot dead in the head by Raymond. On the other side of the phone Mickey knows Dry Eye has paid his wife a visit and so begins flying through the street in his car. This eventually results in his car being smacked by a truck and the vehicle flipping over. To protect herself from Dry Eyes and his men, Rosalind pulls out a paperweight pistol, aiming it at Tony's head. As he ignores her warning, he approaches, and a tiny red mark appears on his forehead. I guess Rosalind wasn't joking when she warned them, she would shoot, letting off another shot and killing Dry Eyes' second goon. Dry Eye then jumps her and engages in some pushing and shoving. Mickey is seen running intensely towards the mechanic shop. As he reaches her office, he sees an unpleasant scene and fires three shots into Dry Eye, ending him for good. Now our plot is explained ever so clearly by the pain in the ass Fletcher. Fletcher explains that Matthew will need a reliable pair of hands to help him run Mickey's business as Raymond does currently for Mickey. He poses Raymond with the question of why Matthew didn't ask Raymond to fulfill the job. Well, that's because he already had Dry Eye earmarked to fulfill that role, under the condition that he helped drive down the price of the business. So, he provided Dry Eye with the location of Mickey's farm, and that's why the toddlers were leaked the information to the whereabouts of the farm. So really, it was Matthew who set the whole chain of events off. But what Matthew did not count on was Dry Eye killing Lord George and wanting the business for himself. Fletcher also tells us that his 20 million price tag is a result of him knowing how Mickey's business is operated, and also because he knows that the very man he is trying to sell it to is trying to force him to sell it on the cheap. He then gives Raymond 72 hours to pay him or the information he has will be provided to Big Dave and he will publish it into the papers. In the meantime, Big Dave finishes work for the day and makes his way out of the building. He sees a man with a GoPro on his head and tells him to move his car. Five boys jump out of the vehicle and the toddlers scare off the security and throw Big Dave into the back of their van. Some time passes and Big Dave wakes up naked and full of mud. We then see the coach sitting in the back of the van. The coach discloses that he made his way into the film business and made a film last night. He instructs Dave to in due course witness his participation in the film and in essence blackmails him to either leave Mickey Pearson alone or the film will be leaked to the public. The film is shown to Raymond and the coach tells him that Big Dave won't be a problem anymore and Raymond is quite impressed but asks them to do one more favor and they can go back to their normal lives. Meanwhile, we see Mickey and Matthew walking through one of Mickey's warehouses and converse with each other about the final price of the deal. Matthew tells Michael that the exit value of the business needs to be recalculated because of the issue they experienced at the location the toddlers wreaked havoc through. This compromises the rest of the locations, and with all expenses of relocating as well as staff and time lost, Matthew re-evaluates the business at a mere $130 million, compared to the initial valuation of $400 million. As Matthew communicates the proceeding using a domino analogy, Mickey questions Matthew further as to who pushed over the first domino. He then reveals Dry Eye's lifeless body and tells Matthew he was responsible. Matthew plays dumb and says he doesn't know that man, and as they walk out of a freezer, his security crew is missing. Michael shows the video of the two at a soccer game and says to Matthew that he is a liar and now he wants a price for the blood on his hands, that he doesn't care about the money, but because they involved his wife, Mickey wants $230 million, the difference between his and Matthew's valuation. He also wants a pound of flesh, he doesn't care where it's from, but he will die in the freezer until both requirements are met. We cut back once again to Fletcher and Raymond, now joined by the coach. Fletcher sees a suitcase and asks Raymond if it contains his payment, where the coach tells Raymond that the briefcase contains his insurance policy as well as all the dirt he gathered on Michael and his operation. Raymond further tells Fletcher that he was onto him long before Fletcher was onto Michael. That he planted a tracker inside his shoes as the toddlers found Fletcher's insurance policy and handed it to the coach. The coach tells Raymond that's three favors and he's finished business with Mickey and leaves. Now, even though Raymond had chucked Fletcher inside a massive esky, Fletcher tells Raymond that there is a vital piece of information that was left out. The coach then receives a call from the toddlers who say they're going to fix the Mickey situation and load their guns. The coach then spots two men entering Raymond's house. Fletcher tells Raymond that it wasn't Dry Eye or Lord George or Matthew after Mickey, but rather it was the father of Aslan, an oligarch and ex-KGB agent. He tells Raymond that they messed up killing Mickey the first time though, 
they are going to get Michael following his meeting at the fish market, and that they are also coming to the house to retrieve Raymond. Raymond sends Mickey messages as he gets into his car but is too late and is greeted by a man that is not Dave and is pointing a Glock towards him. He is in big trouble, and Raymond hears two shots in his backyard and sees that Coach saved his life, but this also gives Fletcher the time to escape. Mickey is stuck and is on the way to his death, but he is so lucky that the bullets meant to kill him from the toddler's weapons actually take care of the two Russians driving Michael. This brings the car to a halt, and as fate would have it, Michael is safe after the ordeal. A couple days later, Fletcher is trying to find other agencies that'll publish his work, and as he heads to a cab to leave the state, he enters a taxi with Raymond as the driver, bringing our movie to a close. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoy action-packed recaps like this make sure to hit that subscribe button.